Today we're going to talk about how activities in our lives become habits and patterns. It's not just activities that can become a habit. Behavioral patterns, such as how we react to situations, dietary habits, sleeping patterns, and emotional patterns, all can affect our lives in a healthy or an unhealthy way. We need to become aware of those habits and patterns. Find whether they're helping us or hindering us in life. Any activity can become a pattern if we repeat it often enough. So how does our brain work when creating these patterns? Our neural pathways are set just like we set an alarm clock to go off at the same time every single day. So do our habits and patterns that we trained our brain to do. For example, driving a car. Your first few lessons were like a nightmare for you and your parents until you would practiced enough that there were some patterns laid down. These patterns have been repeated so often that now you can drive home listening to the radio, talking on the phone, hands-free, of course, (laughs) and thinking about your life, and you don't even remember the actual driving because it's just so automatic. Another example, brushing our teeth every morning. We get up, We automatically brush our teeth, not even thinking about doing it, but subconsciously we were trained from being a child or the age, you know, down when we were, uh, you know, a child's age to brush our teeth when we wake up in the morning. So we automatically keep doing it because it becomes like a ritual. Our emotional and behavioral patterns run permanently and subconsciously just like the operating systems run in the background of our computer and the various programs automatically launch as soon as they're turned on, as do our subconscious behavioral and emotional habits and patterns. We don't see them or even know that they're working, but subconsciously they're controlling everything that goes on in our lives. Most of us live life um, completely unaware of the behavioral patterns and habits that we have programmed ourselves so well to do over and over and day after day. So let's let's look at this. Let's uh, like where do these patterns come from? Okay. I believe that they can be a result of two different things, all going back to our childhood experiences. The first one is that we learned behavior that comes from our parents, our caregivers, and peers as we grow up. I remember when I was about five years old, I was sitting next to my father, and he was biting his nails. I literally remember thinking to myself, my father's doing it, so it must be okay. So I stuck my finger in my mouth and started chewing away. Thank God I finally did kick the nail biting habit. But it took me into adulthood to finally become aware of that habit. I started looking at other people's hands and how nice their nails looked. And became aware of what I was doing. And then used other techniques to help me stop. When we're that young, we live in innocence. So we depend on our caregivers to teach us and guide us in the right direction. Which brings me to my next theory fear and pain. So how does fear and pain relate to patterns and habits? Here's a great example. In a session with one of my hypnotherapy clients, we were trying to find the trigger to his fear of singing in front of people. He had an excellent singing voice and he owns his own uh, music producing company where he creates his own voiceovers. But it wasn't about the, the voiceovers that were already recorded which he did when he was alone. It was about recording them with other people present. So I took him back to his childhood, asking him to find the moments that he may have felt defensive or ridiculed about singing. He told me there was a time when he was about seven years old and he was in school. The students were asked by their teachers to write down on a piece of paper what they wanted to be when they grew up. He wrote a singer. The child next to him leaned over from his desk, looked at his paper, 
seeing that he wrote it, he wrote he wanted to be a singer and started making fun of him and laughing at the fact he wanted to be a singer when he grew up. My client said he immediately scribbled it out, thinking it was wrong because of being ridiculed, and wrote something else on his paper. So I asked him, Do you remember what you wrote after you scribbled it out? He paused for a moment and then said, Honestly, I have no idea what I replaced it with. I just remember him laughing at me. My point to this story is that there are childhood experiences that continue to affect us in our adult lives. When my client wrote he wanted to be a singer as a child, he was laughed at. Now in his adult life, he has the issue of singing in front of people for the fear of being judged or laughed at. So allow me to ask you this. What childhood experiences can you think of right now that may be affecting your current life. Keep this question in the back of your mind and start to become aware of the behavioral patterns and emotional habits. There's a worksheet that you can uh, download on my website under uh, forms and brochures, under the tab of uh, brochures and forms. So feel free to download that to help you find different experiences or triggers that um, cause you to have a, an automatic reaction. Can you think of situations where you react instantly to something and you're not even sure what you're reacting to or why you're even reacting that way? The speed of the brain's background operating system is so quick to react because of past experiences. Before you know it, your brain has heard what someone said, started defending you, and blaming something or someone else and started the protection process because it could because it's responding to the story that you're telling yourself from childhood it could be a, a story that you're not worth loving or you're not good enough or you'll never succeed or whatever it may be your operating system is trying to protect you from the first time that you felt that way you don't know why you keep reacting that way. And it's probably not the exact same situation every single time. But causes the same defensive mechanisms or the same type of behavior or emotion to come out and start protecting you from the pain. So I guess um, my question would be, are you ready to make the choice to change? Are you ready to understand why you react the way you do to certain situations? Are you ready to go back and explore the stories you tell yourself now, the stories that are not true? Only you can change the story. A million people can tell you that you are good enough and you can succeed, but until you believe it, it will cease to happen. So how do you start to become aware of your of your um, habits and patterns? First, write down your regular routine for one day. Even if you have to record on your phone on the go, just say, okay, I'm eating this for lunch or taking a break and smoking a cigarette or I'm taking a nap because I feel this way or, or if something happens that causes you to react in a negative way. Write down or record again your experience, then go back to it later. Don't dwell on it. There are three things that we must do when it comes to letting go of fears. Face it, feel it, and free it. Here's a briefing on the three F's of fear. And we will go back, we will go into this in later videos or podcasts. First, facing it. Did you ever hear about slaying your dragons? Now is the time. We need to become aware of them, pick up our swords, and start fighting back against that dragon. Feel it. We must be able to feel the emotions. If we don't feel the emotions and change the story that we tell ourselves, we will not be able to release it. Then comes free, free it, freeing it. This is releasing it and telling it that it no longer serves our higher purpose. 
So we'll, while we'll, we are finding and facing our fears, it can be emotionally challenging. Know that we must take baby steps and deal with one thing at a time. We don't want to try to take all these emotional challenges on and then set ourselves up for failure. We take one step at a time. This means after becoming aware of one habit or one pattern, we start to create change for that one pattern or habit, not the other three or four that we also have. Once we have slayed that one dragon, then we can move on to the next. So please be gentle with yourself and don't get down on yourself while exploring. It takes time and patience to transform our lives. It takes baby steps to heal. And I believe that you can do it. Now, are you ready to see what is stopping you from moving on to your purpose in life? Ask yourself these questions. What patterns are going on in your life that are interfering and blocking your joy? What do you do that you regret after you have done it? When you have arguments, are you blaming others or are you taking responsibility? If things are not the way you want them to be in your life, are you blaming others or do you take full responsibility for your actions? I have an empowering prayer for the soul from Mary Ann Williamson's book, Illuminata, A Return to Prayer. I truly hope that you all can recite this or write it down, record it, and I hope it helps you. Recite this prayer asking for divine guidance to help you find the answers necessary to initiate change in your life. Dear, and then put in your creator. So dear creator, on this day I ask for a new life. I ask to be reborn in spirit and mind. I choose to consider as possible, through your grace, the total transformation of my mind, body, and spirit. The mystical nature of who I really am is known to you, but not to me, dear one. Allow me to see revealed the depth and power of my true self. Thank you. Amen. I hope you all enjoyed this podcast, and I hope it helps you to move forward and create change in your life. If you'd like to contact me, you can reach me through my website at www.lifeshareuniversity.com. Thank you so much for listening in today, and we look forward to seeing the changes that you create. Feel free to send me a message or post uh, you know, a, a, um, a comment. And we will be happy to list on how you created the change on our website. Thank you so much and have an awesome day. Namaste.